Good afternoon, everyone. Great to see you guys on this day of worship. And may you receive God's grace through today's worship. Amen? And may you get rid of all the sense of guilt. Right? It's okay, even if you make the same problems over and over and over again. Because that is the time that you go back to the covenant of Jesus Christ. Right? Even when you witness your weaknesses, your limitations, that is when you hold on to the power of God, which is transcending time and space. So before we begin, let us do our confession of faith. Jesus is the Christ, the Son of the living God. Amen. So why don't we bless each other by saying, I am what I am by the grace of God. Right, you are who you are by the grace of God. So there is no reason for you to bring forth your own assertions. Because everything is within God's grace and His absolute sovereignty. There is no reason for you to emphasize your expertise, your knowledge, or your experiences. Because everything is done within God's grace. So all you have to do is, just like today's message, like Pastor Jung emphasized, we need to be within the blessing of worship. Because only through worship can you set the direction of your life. Only through worship you can take challenge towards the things of God. And only through worship, you can experience true healing. May this time be that time for you to restore everything that God has given you. Amen? Right. So today's title is, The One with the Gospel is Enough to Block the Disaster of the Age. Right? If you look in the Bible, right, God has already used, always used one person with the gospel to block the disaster. If you think about Joseph. With one person, Joseph, only God blocked the disaster of Egypt. Right? With one person, Samuel, just like today's passage, he blocked the disaster of the Philistines. And with one person, Timothy, God overturned Rome after 2,250 years of persecution. Right? If, you look, if you look at the evidences in the Bible, all you have to do is pray that, Lord, may I become that one person with the gospel that can block the disaster of myself, of my family, and of my workplace, and my home country. May that prayer really be restored in your life. Amen? Right. So, one person with the gospel is enough. Right? Even if all the people around you say the words of unbelief, as long as you hold on to the covenant, as long as you hold tight to the absolute faith in the triune God, God will absolutely use you. Right? It's not about numbers, it's not about majority, it's not about, the, it's not about the atmosphere, but it is about whether you have this absolute faith in God or not. God is looking at that faith, right? So may you restore that absolute faith. And before we jump right into the main content, uh, we would like to talk about last week's pulpit message. Right? It was the eternal life in Jesus only, right? You have been given eternal life. Why? Because you have Jesus Christ inside of you. Amen? Right. So why don't we bless each other? You have been given eternal life. Do you believe that? Do you really believe that? Do you? Yes, because I do. Yes, so eternal life in Jesus Christ only. Right? But why has God given us eternal life? Because we were within eternal destruction after the incident of Genesis chapter 3. Right? Always, you need to look at this both sides. The reason God wants to give you eternal life is because everyone without God is on the path of destruction. So everyone is living the life of destruction no matter what. Regardless of your age, regardless of your culture, regardless of your ethnicities, regardless of your backgrounds, everyone without God has the same fundamental problem. Right? This problem of sin, the separation, and power of Satan. That's why everyone is walking down the path of destruction under the three problems of fundamental problems. And no one can resolve this. Right? So when you worship last week, did you worship as if it is the same content that I hear every single time? Or did you worship 
as if it is, it is the last worship in my life. Because our church only emphasizes Jesus Christ. So for you guys, this term, Jesus Christ, may sound redundant, may sound repetitive. However, to those who have come to our church for the first time, and for those who are thirsty and desperate in the field, that might be their first and last time to hear the gospel of Jesus Christ. Right? And I want you to have that sense of urgency. Right? If I don't proclaim this gospel to my husband, to my wife, to my relatives, who would save them? Right? If God did not put me in the place of my workplace, who can preach this gospel to my co-workers? If God did not allow me to be raised and born in my home country, who would proclaim this gospel to my fellow citizens of the Philippines, Iran, Burundi, and Kenya? Okay? And even in our songs today, be strong in the grace of God. Right? God has entrusted this gospel to the reliable man, which means you have been given this gospel. That means to God's eyes, you are trustworthy and you are reliable. All you have to do is restore this faith and proclaim this gospel. That is the reason God has called you even before creation. Regardless of your weaknesses, regardless of your limitations, God has called you with specific purpose, which is saving lives with the gospel. Right? Even today, Pastor Jung says, the greatest ministry, the greatest ministry before God it's not about giving donations. It's not about giving a lot of devotions to the church. But it is about saving people with the gospel. I want every single one of you to be interested, to set your eyes upon saving lives with the gospel. Amen? And today I was sitting in my chair and looking at the, uh, the singers. I kind of witnessed, wow, the tears that they shed and the reason for their tears have really changed. And I was really thankful that I can really carry out this role of proclaiming this gospel at this pulpit because I saw like one of the singers like shedding tears for out of thanksgiving probably, out of gratitude. Yeah, because I can tell from her face because she's not crying because of lack of money. But I can see that she was crying out of thanksgiving of salvation. And that must be the answer for you as well. Every single time. Why do you come to church? Why? Why do you come to this ministry? Is it for your personal profit? Is it for your personal gaining? What is it? Is it to be loved by your besties? Why do you come to church? Why? You really need to check upon your spiritual state because... We are almost going towards the end of this year, 2024. And next month, we have to reorganize everything and start anew. And when the Israelites came out from Egypt, and the very first order that God gave to them was to build the tabernacle. And everyone was bewildered. Why didn't God give us some time to reorganize everything, settle down everything? But why did he give us the immediate order to build a tabernacle with all the jewels, with all the gold and silver that you got from Egypt. Because this path of wilderness, we've never gone before. Year 2025, I've never gone through before. Same for you. Then what do we have to follow? Your feelings? Your guts? Your experiences? No, we need to follow the stream of the word. That's why we need to restore the thanksgiving of salvation every single time. And we need to set the direction through every single worship that we give. And we need to come up with the things that we take challenge through worship only. Right? That's why worship must become your priority. Amen? Right? Let us bless each other by saying, worship must become your priority. Right? Because God has saved you. Right? God has given you the eternal way to be revived. Like John chapter 3, 16, it says, For God so loved the world that He gave His one and only Son, that whoever believes in Him shall not perish, but have what? Eternal life. In other words, if you don't believe in Jesus Christ, your life is the life of destruction. 
you were supposed to perish. However, because God loved you so much, out of his abundant love towards you, he sent his only and begotten son, Jesus Christ. And when you believe in him, you have eternal life. That's why worship must become your priority. And the object of worship is not people. The object, 예배 대상. The object of worship is not your feeling. The object of worship is who? The triune God who saved you with Jesus Christ. And because nothing that you and I have is worthy enough to receive God's salvation, God requested only one thing. All you have to do is believe in the Messiah. Right? That's why Jesus said, your ancestor Abraham believed in me and he was saved. Abraham was in the Old Testament. He couldn't see Jesus. But Jesus himself said, your ancestor believed in me and he was saved. What does that amplify? That means when you believe in Jesus Christ, only when you have faith in Jesus Christ, you will be saved. Right? I want you to really restore this faith in your life, in your walk of faith. That's why John chapter 1 verse 12 says, Yet to all who believe and received him, to those who believed in his name, he gave the right to become what? Children of God. Right? Let us bless each other by saying, you are a child of God. Do you know why I keep on asking you to bless each other? So that this covenant can be imprinted within you. When you speak with your mouth, when you confess with your mouth, you are actually hearing what you're saying, and it will be imprinted in your mind, your thoughts, and your soul. I am a child of God. That means your life is guaranteed completely. Right? So 2 Corinthians 5.17, it says, Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. The old has gone, the new has come. But think about it. In the face of problems, you try to hold on the past. When problems, conflicts arise, instead of holding on to the new covenant, you always go back to your past scars. You always go back to your past stereotypes. You always go back to your past biases. But the Bible says, the old has gone, let it go. Why do you hold on to the, your past scars, your past views on people? Why do you keep on holding on to your past stereotypes towards other people that you might hate? Even that person that you don't like is a new creation. That's what the Bible says, right? If anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. The old has gone. Please let go of your past. Amen? Amen. It is finished. It is finished. The new has come. New life has come upon you. The new grace, like today, today's message, the new grace has come upon you. So when you believe in Jesus Christ, your spiritual DNA has changed. When you believe in Jesus Christ, your destiny has changed. From what? From being a child of Satan to a child of God. So you can call God your father. Right? The relationship with God has been restored. And as a child of God, God has given you, just as Joshua prayed in his representative prayer, how many assurances? Five assurances. And that must become your pillars of your walk of faith. Those five assurances must become the foundations of your future. First, salvation, the assurance of salvation. That means God is with you forever. Right? Your parents may not be with you forever. Your friends cannot be with you forever, but the triune God can be with you forever. So the blessing of salvation that has been given to you is guaranteed not for months, not for years, but for eternity. That is the assurance of salvation that you must enjoy every single time. And the assurance of forgiveness. All your sins from the past, present, and future have been completely resolved. Right? Even if you fall into the same problems over and over and over again, that is not the time for you to be discouraged. But that is the time for you to say and confess that that's why I need Jesus Christ even today. Right? When you fall into the same spiritual problems, right? that is the perfect time for you to confess that I need Jesus Christ even right now. Right? Do not be discouraged. And the assurance of 
answers to prayers. As long as you pray in the name of Jesus Christ, God absolutely hears your prayers and He answers you. Right? That's why you need to connect everything to prayer. You must connect everything, not to your thoughts, not to your anxieties, but to your prayers. Because you have the right to receive prayer answers. Okay? And the assurance of guidance. Okay? I, think, I think I need to use these five assurances as one of the golden bell problems. What are the five assurances? Let's see who gets it right. The assurance of guidance. Right? The Holy Spirit, unseen to your eyes, is guiding your life perfectly. Do you believe that? Amen. Do you believe that the Holy Spirit dwells inside of you? Amen. Then you are a child of God. Right? And the assurance of victory. At Mount Calvary, Christ has proclaimed victory. Christ has defeated the power of death. That's why you have been given this assurance of victory. Nothing can perish you. Nothing can harm you. Nothing can destroy you. Because your life, just as I said last week, has been established upon the rock foundation of Jesus Christ. Right? So you are not a loser, but a victor in Jesus Christ. You're not a minority. Okay? Who says Seung Ni? Yes. Yan Seung Ni. That's a cool name. Right? Yan Seung Ni means continuous victory. Continuous. Yan, yan Sok Den In Seung Ni. Right? You're not a loser. You're a victor in Jesus Christ. Amen? Amen? Right. So going into the main part. As you look around the world, and as the evidence that the gospel is disappearing, we are going to see three ages befalling us. Three ages. First, it is the age of drugs and homosexuality. Why? People are against God. People say that there is no God. That's why we are going to Gwangamun today. That's why we are going to Yoido today because people try to pass a law that try to acknowledge homosexuality, which God hates the most. Right? And this is a time that we take actions. Like two million Christians will gather in one place. We're going to pray all together, holding on to the same prayer topics, and we will see how God is going to work upon us and upon our families and upon our nation. And the second age is the age of mental illnesses. Because people are not with God, because people are not enjoying the relationship with God, they are bound to be afflicted mentally. Because they are disconnected with God, mental illnesses are bound to increase. That's why so many people, even though there are so many doctors, so many hospitals out there, but there are so many more patients with mental illnesses. And the Bible says only one cause. It is because they are separated. They are disconnected with God. And the third age is that the age of war will, will be dawning upon you. Because everyone is me-centered. Every nation is me-centered. That's why they're shooting missiles at each other. So they are engaging wars. And that is the prophecy of the Bible as well. As the end time gets near, there will be earthquake. There will be wars and disasters. But that is not the end. But when will the end come? When the gospel of this kingdom will be preached to the ends of the earth. And the end will come. That's why our church, that's why our ministry is focused only on preaching the gospel. Amen? Right. Because God is moving everything centered around evangelism and missions. If your life is within that covenant, if your life is within that flow, God has no choice but to bless you. I want you to really receive the answer of becoming the evangelist. Right? That is the reason why God has called you. So the disaster of the age can never be blocked by your effort, your hard works, or knowledge. The impending disaster cannot be blocked by people's effort. And it was the same case for Samuel. In the age of Samuel, there was the disaster of the age. And in today's passage, verse 1 and 2, it says, The boy Samuel ministered before God, before the Lord, under Eli. And in those days, the word of the Lord was what? Rare. Which means, we can't see the word of God. And there were not many visions. That means, we can't see the future clearly, because we're not following the word of God. That was the disaster of the age at that time. 
And it says, one night Eli, whose eyes were becoming so weak. Think about it. Eli was the spiritual leader who was leading the entire nation of Israel. But his eyes were becoming weak. What does that imply? He won't be able to see the spiritual reality. He could barely see. And he was lying down in his usual place. While Samuel was lying in the temple of God, Eli, who was a spiritual leader, was lying in his usual place. Do you see the contrast between the two? Right? Eli was lying in his usual place, but Samuel was lying in the temple of God, where the ark of God was, which means he was following the stream of the word. And that was the disaster of the age at that time. In other words, people were not paying attention to God's word. Right? God's word was rare. They only sensitive to the words of people. And as a result, God did not provide them visions because they are not paying attention to the word of God. In addition, the spiritual leader, as I mentioned before, he was spiritually blind and weak. So everyone was lost in darkness. Right? Without you, everyone will be within darkness. That's why God has given you the light of Christ. Why? To shine this light as a watch person. You are the watch person of Jesus Christ. Okay? With one person, you only, God can save everyone who is lost in darkness. You need to believe that. That is your identity. So the first thing that you need to keep in mind is that the disaster of the age in the times of Samuel. So what do you think is the greatest disaster? Not having a lot of money? Not having a house? Not having a fancy car? No. The greatest disaster is that you do not know God. That is the greatest disaster. And that is not my word. That is the word of the Bible. In Judge chapter 2 verse 10, which was also mentioned in today's 10 a.m. service, it says, after that a whole generation had been gathered to their fathers, which means after the adult generation passed away, another generation grew up who knew neither the Lord nor what He had done for Israel. What does that imply? Because the adult generation did not enjoy the gospel and did not relay this gospel upon the next generations, another generation that knew nothing about God, nothing about the work of God, grew up. We shouldn't face the same problem. We should, rely, we, we should really relay this gospel upon our next generations. That's why we are doing the remnant movement. Why? They will become the main figures for world evangelization. They will become the main figures for evangelizing the 237 nations and 5,000 tribes. That's why whether they lie on the floor, whether they walk through the streets, we emphasize only the gospel, only Jesus Christ. Right? So after the adult generation passed away, in other words, after your, your parents passed away, another generation that does not know about God appeared. And that was the spiritual state of Israel. Even though they were the chosen people, they did not enjoy the gospel. And that problem can happen to us. Even though we are chosen before creation in Christ, if you don't enjoy the gospel, if you don't personalize the gospel within your life, then what will you give to your next generations? Your anxiety, your concerns, your stereotypes, what will you pass down on to your next generations? That problem can happen to us even today. If you don't enjoy the gospel on a daily basis, that's what happens. Israel was a chosen people. However, their new generation came up that did not know nothing about God, nothing about the work of God that He had done for His people. We should block this. Right? That's why God has given you this gospel. One person with the gospel is enough. That's why I said today's title is Enough. One person with the gospel is enough. It's sufficient to block the disaster of the age. Right? And that person is you. Amen? Amen? Don't be deceived. So do you know what happens if you do not properly relay the true gospel unto your next generations? 
they will become spiritually enslaved. They become captivated. They become colonized by the world, by Satan, and by non-believers. We need to block. We need to stop this. How? By restoring the true gospel. And Judges chapter 18.30. Why don't we read it all together? The book of Judges chapter 18.30. Let us read it all together. There the Danites set up for themselves the idols. And Jonathan, son of Gershom, the son of Moses, and his sons were priests for the tribe of Dan until the time of the captivity of the land. I don't know if I have to say amen to this. Think about it. The son of Moses and his grandson became the priest of the tribe of Dan, which made idols. That's what happens. If you don't relay this gospel unto your next generations, your children, your next generations will become the errand boy for making the idols, making the shrines, and making the temples, and they will be at the forefront to doing the idol worship. And that is the disaster of the age in the times of Samuel. Think about it. Who was Moses? He was the leader who experienced the exodus. But the Bible says because they did not enjoy this gospel, because they did not relay this gospel unto the next generations, the sons of Moses, the grandson of Moses became the high priest of the tribe of Dan, which made idols. We need to block this. That's why God has called you even before creation to share, to, to proclaim this gospel. And do you know what it says in the last chapter and the last verse of the book of Judge? In Judge chapter 21, verse 25. Let us read it all together. Judge 21, 25. It is the last chapter and the last verse of the book of Judge. Let us read it all together. In those days, Israel had no king. Everyone did as he saw fit. In Korean, it says, 자기 소견에 오른 대로. Even though they go to church, even though they serve the ministry, they do everything they saw fit. They don't listen to the word of God. They don't listen to the prophet. They don't listen to the priest because I myself am the standard of my life. That was the spiritual state of all the nation of Israel. In other words, people were doing everything that they wanted, not what God wanted. Everyone did everything according to their own desire. They became me-centered. Everyone did as he saw fit. I want every member of YM to do everything according to God's covenant and His plan and His will. Amen? Right. That's why our ministry the standard of our ministry is not me. You're not following me. You're not following the Korean workers. But you're following the stream of the word that will absolutely be fulfilled in your life. Right? So being me-centered is the best channel through which Satan can attack you. So the, the more you become me-centered, the easier for you to be attacked by Satan. However, the more you become God-centered, the more you become led by the Holy Spirit. Which path do you want to choose? Which direction do you want to go? I want every single one of you to receive the perfect guidance of the Holy Spirit. Then all you have to do is follow the stream of the Word and communicate with the pulpit 24-7. That's why a few weeks ago I said, whenever problems arise in your life, do not call me. That doesn't literally say don't call me. What I'm saying is change your priority. When problems arise, do not be taken aback. But try to meditate upon the pulpit that was given in that week. And God will absolutely give you the answer. I want you to experience that first and become a witness of the fulfillment of the word. Right? Fulfillment of the word. And this was the spiritual state of Israel. And there were 14 judges that led Israel before Samuel came up. There were 14 judges. However, all those judges could not block the disaster of Israel because everyone was within this spiritual state. They were not enjoying the gospel. They were not relaying this gospel unto the next generations. And they are doing what they are doing centered around 
myself. And at such time, God prepared one person with the gospel, and that name was Samuel. Think about it. Whenever you look at your family, you may think, that, oh, why has God put me into this family? However, at such time, God has prepared you with the gospel to save your family, to save your nation, to save your workplace. Do you believe that? Everything is within God's absolute sovereignty. That's why in verse 3, it says, the lamp of God had not yet gone out. See, everyone is within spiritual darkness. However, the Bible says the lamp of God had not yet gone out, which means God has prepared one person with the gospel, and that person is you. The lamp of God had not yet gone out, and Samuel was lying down, where? In the temple of the Lord, while Eli was lying in his usual place. Samuel was lying in the temple of the Lord. I'm not saying you need to move over to Yewon Church from now on sleeping over on this floor. I'm not saying that. What I'm saying is that you need to be really close to the Word of God. The Word of God must become your guidebook. The Word of God must become the standard of your life. And that was the answer that Samuel received. So in the age of spiritual darkness, where the Word of God was rare and there were not many visions, God raised Samuel who had the true and genuine gospel. Right? So the second thing that you need to remember is Samuel was the one who remained with the gospel. Right? You guys are the one who remained with the gospel. Amen? Namunja. You have been remained for the specific purpose of God. Right? So how could he remain with the gospel? Samuel, ever since he was young, received the correct covenant from his mom, Hannah. Samuel received the correct covenant of the Nazarite. Not being influenced by the culture of darkness, but stand firm before God. In 1 Samuel chapter 1, verse 10 to 11, it says, And she made a vow, saying, O Lord Almighty, if you will only look upon your servant's misery, and remember me, and not forget your servant, but give her a son. Then I will give him the, to the Lord for all the days of his life, and no razor will ever be used on his head. It is the covenant of the Nazareth. There were so many sons, there are so many daughters, there are so many babies out there, but none of them has been offered to the Lord. But Hannah says, if God, you were to give me a son, I will offer him to you to be used for your purpose. This covenant was relayed to Samuel. So to Sydney, Layan, you need to relay this covenant. Right? Lord, the Lord God will be with you. You must be utilized by God. That is the greatest success in your life. I may not be with you forever, but the triune God will be with you forever. You must imprint the covenant to Sydney, Right? And everyone else as well. So ever since he was young, the correct covenant was imprinted within Samuel. That's why we need to have forum with your children. That's why we have Steffi over there. Where's Steffi? Where's Steffi? Oh, I just, oh no, she, no, she's missing. That's okay. Yeah. That's why we raised Steffi <laughs> as the one in charge of the remnants, relaying this gospel. I know God is transcending time and space. I know he's, she's been praying. So, if you look at 1 Samuel chapter 3, verse 3, it says, one more time, The lamp of God had not yet gone out, and Samuel was lying down in the temple of the Lord where the ark of God was. In other words, Samuel followed the stream of the word. The ark of the covenant represents the living word of God. So Samuel followed the stream of the word. That must be your answer as well. Whenever you come to church on Sunday, we give 52 worship per year. And in every worship that you give, you must find and follow the stream of the word. Even today, you must find your own personal stream that God has given you. Nae, my spiritual stream, my spiritual covenant. Everyone might have different covenant, right? even though we listen to the same message. That itself means God's word is living and active. 
So you need to follow the stream of the word and you need to let your children to follow the stream of the word. That's why sometimes you need to make them memorize the Bible verses. That's why I make you memorize Bible verses for the sake of the golden band. Right? It seems like your passion for winning the golden band has been going down and down and down. But you'll be surprised when you, when you, when you hear the prizes. Your passion will be restored. Passion. Yes. That's why we become material-centered. Yes. Because the prize, I'm going to memorize it. Not because of thanksgiving or salvation. Because of the prize. In 1 Samuel chapter 3, 19, it says, The Lord was with Samuel as he grew up, and he let none of his words fall to the ground. Right? You need to receive an answer. As long as you hold on to the covenant, as long as you follow the stream of the word, whenever you pray, that prayer will never fall to the ground. Amen? Right. When your prayer matches with the desire of God, God will absolutely answer you. Amen? When the content of your prayer matches with the desire of God, nothing can block you. You can experience the working of the Holy Spirit upon your life. So none of His words fell to the ground. You need to receive that answer. And you need to stand as a witness and tell others, whenever remnants come up to you, how do you pray? And you must be able to tell them how I pray. That's what we call a witness. So this is the answer given to those who follow the stream of prayer. That's why you need to connect everything to prayer. Amen? Everything, every incident, every meeting, every occasions that take place in your life, you need to connect that to prayer. Then what happens? You can seek out God's plan and His will within that meeting, within that occasions, within that incident. And lastly, the third thing that you need to keep in mind is that when you have this correct covenant and when you enjoy the stream of the word and prayer, the answer will be given to you and that is the answer of becoming the spiritual summit. Right? Let us bless each other. You will become the spiritual summit. Right? That is the answer that you must receive. So Samuel was the one who received this answer. If you look at 1 Samuel chapter 7, verse 9, it was a time that Samuel ordered all the Israelites to come and gather at Mizpah. And he said, you need to get rid of all your idols and return to the Lord. And that is the only way for you to be revived. And that is the only way for you to survive from the attacks of the Philistines. And at such time, Samuel gave a burnt offering to God. You know what this burnt offering sac- represents? It represents Jesus Christ. When all the Israelites gather at Mizpah, the Philistines, the armies of the Philistines heard about it, and they thought that, oh, when we go to the region called Mizpah and attack them, they will all be destroyed. And at that time, Samuel did not order them to prepare the army, but he gave a burnt offering to God. That's what it means to become a spiritual summit. When the problems arise, you need to hold on to the covenant of Jesus Christ. When crisis come, instead of relying on people, instead of relying on your own experiences, you must hold on to the covenant of Jesus Christ. And that's what Samuel did in times of crisis, in times of persecutions. It says, Then Samuel took a suckling lamb and offered it up as a whole burnt offering to the Lord. He cried out to the Lord on Israel's behalf. And the Lord, what? Answered him. The only way God answers you is to pray in the name of Jesus Christ. The only way you can experience the work of God is when you hold on to the covenant of Jesus Christ. See? When he offered a bond offering. In Korean it says, 온전한 번제. When he gave this whole burnt offering to God, God answered him. Not because you're diligent, not because you're smart, not because you give a lot of devotions to the church, but when you hold on to the covenant of Jesus Christ, God answers you. Amen? All right, that must be your answer. And another answer that was given to Samuel was that while he was alive, there was no war. 
which means he was a peacemaker. In 1 Samuel chapter 7, verses 13 to 14, it says, So the Philistines were subdued. See, Satan will be subdued when you hold on to the covenant of Jesus Christ. So the Philistines were subdued and did not invade Israelite territory again. Throughout Samuel's lifetime, the hand of the Lord was against the Philistines. In other words, when you are in Christ Jesus, when you hold on to the covenant of Jesus Christ, the hand of the Lord, the almighty hand of the Lord is with you. Right? And it says, the towns from Ekron to Gath that the Philistines had captured from Israel were restored to her. And Israel delivered the neighboring territory from the power of the Philistines. And it, and, and it says what? And there was peace between Israel and the Amorites. When you hold on to the covenant of Jesus Christ and raise the bodies in your field, in your family, in your workplace, what happens? God will give you true peace. You will become the true peacemaker. And because of one person, Samuel, who had the accurate gospel, there was no war but peace in Israel. Right? Because of you, there will be peace of God in your family. Amen? Amen? Because of you who have the gospel, there will be peace in your workplace. You need to have this assurance. And you must take on the role of becoming a peacemaker with the gospel. Let us bless one more time. You are the peacemaker, peacemaker of God. Right, peacemaker, right? Not a divider. Not a divider. But there are so many dividers. You are a peacemaker, okay? Because everyone is within God's grace. Whether you like that person or not, everyone is within God's grace. And because of you guys, everyone will be revived. And God attaches disciples to the disciples. And likewise, to the spiritual summit, God attaches the posterity who will receive the answer of the spiritual summit, which was David. Because Samuel was a spiritual summit, God attached this posterity who will receive the answer of the spiritual summit, David, to him. So what did he do? Samuel anointed David with oil to become the king of Israel. And in 1 Samuel chapter 16, 13, it says, So Samuel took the horn of oil and anointed him in the presence of his brothers. And from that day on, the Spirit of the Lord came upon David in power. Samuel then went to Ramah. From that day on, when Samuel anointed David with oil, God worked upon him in power. You need to receive that answer. right? You must really become the disciple of Christ first and then seek out the disciple as well so that this gospel movement can continue on without a halt. So God allows Samuel to raise David in order to carry on this baton of the gospel. You need to relay this baton of the gospel unto your next generations. Amen? You have this holy burden. You have this holy burden to relay this baton of the gospel unto your next generations. And David, who received this baton, completed the preparation for the temple construction, and he built a thousand bartizans to protect Israel. He built a thousand bartizans to protect every region of Israel. And that answer must be given to you. When? When you hold on to the covenant of Jesus Christ. And because of you, one person with the gospel, God will protect your family, God will protect your nation, and God will protect your workplace. Amen? Right, that is the answer that you need to enjoy. And as a conclusion, from now on, you need to see the disaster of your family. You need to see the disaster of myself. You need to see the disaster of your nation. Then what happens? God will give you the absolute covenant. Right? The capital C, covenant. When you see the disaster of this age, God will let you hold on to the covenant that you must hold on to. And God has given you the solution of Christ. Then what you need to do, you need to go to the disaster zone with this absolute answer. And we call that the vision. You already saw 
the disaster. And you already have the solution. And you're now going to the disaster zone to save everyone. And you know the covenant. And you know where the disaster zone is. Then now what happens is you know what I need to do. And we call that the dream. Now you know what I need to do 24-7. And that becomes your heavenly mandate. And that becomes your calling. And that becomes your mission. Right? And that's what you need to receive in every worship. Every time you give worship, you need to discover your heavenly mandate. Oh, this is what God desires from me. Oh, this is the calling of God towards myself. Oh, this is the mission that God wants me to carry out throughout this week. That must become your dream. That must become your 24. But because we're lacking, we're not carrying it out with our own power, but with the power of God. We need to realize God's method. And we call that image. Because we are created in the image of God. That's why we have to carry out everything that we do at church with the power of God, the power of the throne. Amen? Amen. Right. And lastly, as you continue to enjoy this power, the blessing of the throne, God will let you enjoy the things of God. And God will let you leave behind the eternal masterpiece. And we call that the practice. And if you combine all these five together, we call that what? CVDIP. My covenant. My vision. My dream that I need to do 24-7. And not my power, but the power of God. The image of God. And God will let me leave behind the masterpiece, which is called the practice. And I want every single one of you to leave behind the eternal inheritance, eternal legacy, and eternal masterpiece so that another generation with the correct gospel can arise and shine the light of Christ. Amen? Amen. All right, let us pray. Heavenly Father, thank you for giving us the blessing of salvation by your grace. Help us open our spiritual eyes to see the disaster of the age and help us to have this conclusion that the one with the gospel is enough to block the disaster of the age. And as we follow the stream of the word, prayer, and evangelism, may we receive the answer of becoming the spiritual summit who will block the disaster of my family, my workplace, and my nation. In Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. Mm-hmm.